Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss what is GAP and what is the purpose of GAP and who sets GAP. Let's go ahead and review real quick what is the objective of financial reporting? Why do we have financial reporting? What purpose does it serve? Well, financial reporting is designed to provide useful financial information to two groups of people, mainly investors and creditors. And who are these two groups? Investors and creditors are the groups that fund fund companies either through loans or through equity investments, buying into the various companies. Now, these two groups, investors and creditors, they need information to make a decision before you lend money, before you lend money to another company, before you invest in a company, you want to know how is that company doing. And oftentimes you're going to have a, B, C, D, many options, many companies asking you for money, asking you uh, to lend them money, asking you to invest in them. How are you gonna make that decision? Well, if all these companies, company A versus company B versus company C, are presenting their financial information in a way that's comparable, then I can compare A to B to C and make the proper decision. And this is why we, do, we need to have a uniform set of accounting standards that's going to help us compare the performance of various companies and this is where gap comes into place gap is specific as well as broad guidelines that companies follow when they're pre preparing their financial statements it helps companies measure their assets measure their liabilities how to report information on their financial statements what to report in the notes once i have all this information once everything is comparable then i can make a better decision whether i'm an investor or a creditor now the question becomes who sets gap who creates gap before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Well, in theory, the US Congress can create accounting rule and sets gap, but they don't do that. They assign this process to the SEC, to the Securities and Exchange Commission. The Securities and Exchange Commission is a government, government entity, and also the SEC don't, don't do that. The SEC delegate this process to the private sector. So let's take a look first at how was the SEC created or how was the SEC born? Well, the SEC was created or came to life after the stock market crash of 1929. Why? Because many companies were reporting misleading information or they were not reporting enough information on their financial statements, which in turn misled the investors, which in turn led to the stock market crash of 1929. So as a result, Congress wanted to restore confidence in the stock market. So what would they do? They created this organization called the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, to do what? To oversee the market. And the SEC specifically created two important acts in restoring confidence because after the stock market crash, no one wanted to invest in the stock market. And those two acts are the Securities Acts of 1933 and 19. 34. The 1933 Securities Act deals with initial public offering or what we call the primary market. What is that? Before a company goes public, before a company goes public. So for example, let's look at a company like Meta, which is Facebook. At For a long period of time, Meta or Facebook was a private company that at some point this private company wants to go public. They go through something called initial public offering. They sell their stock. They sell part of the company to up to the public for the first time, and they become a public company. Now, this process going from private to public is called, I, they go through an IPO, initial public offering. Before you sell your stocks to the public, you have to comply with the SEC Act of 1933. 
And in this acts, they ask you for certain to disclose certain information. They check your financial statements. They want to make sure it's audited, so on and so forth. Then another act called the Securities Exchange Act of 1934. So notice what we did in 1934, we added the word exchange to the act. What does that deal with? It deals with secondary markets. So 1933 with primary market, when the company goes public initially, you follow those rules. In 1934, once you are public, now you are traded on the exchange. This is where public, different people are trading amongst each other. So the public is trading stocks. Here, the company will have to report certain information. 10K, which is the annual report, 10 Qs, certain reports on regular basis to inform the investors what's going on, to inform the public. But at this point, the stock is already public. The stock is already public. Now, notice the SEC, the main thing is that 1933, 1934, that oversees the primary and secondary market. But they don't set accounting rules. They delegate this process to the private sector which is the private sector, which is not a government sector. Now we're going to take a quick short history lesson about the private sector. Well, the private sector started in 1938 and they created, the, the committee that was created first was the American Institute of Accounting, IAIA, which is a national professional organization for CPAs. This is how it started. It was eventually named AICPA, which is the American Institute of Certified Public Accountant, which we are, well, that's what we know about today. And if you're not a student member, you should be a student member. The This organization, this Committee on, on Accounting Procedures, they issued 51 accounting research bulletins or ARBs, research bulletins. Okay, or simply put, bulletins. And those are basically accounting rules. They, they issue 51 of them between 1938 and 1959. They did not have a theoretical framework and they used a piecemeal approach. What does a piecemeal approach means? It means there's an issue, you go to them, you ask them about the issue, that, that piecemeal and they will deal with it right, right there. This is what a piecemeal issue is. And this committee on accounting procedures lasted from 1938 till 1959 and they issued bulletin. Now, why am I emphasizing this point, bulletin, bulletin? Because on the CPA exam, you want, you may want to know that the Committee on Accounting Procedures, they issued bulletin. Accounting Principle Board, APB, that came after the CAP from 1959 to 1973. They issued, rather than research bulletin, they issued opinions or principles board opinion or for short opinions, okay? APBOs, opinions, opinions. Now, they, they, members were mostly volunteers, mostly volunteers in this organization, and they were mostly CPAs. Some criticism for the accounting principle board was it did not react fast enough to accounting changes. Again, it, it used that piecemeal approach, and it was criticized for favoring public accounting interests because it was mostly CPAs. Of course, they're going to favor their group over the interests of other groups. And there was no theoretical framework. It means they were still using a piecemeal approach. This accounting principle board was eventually replaced by what we know today, FASB, the Financial Accounting Standard Board starting in 1973. The FASB represent various constituencies, just as not, not only CPAs and accountant, auditors, profit-oriented companies, not-for-profit, educators, financial analysts, government, so on and so forth. It has seven full-time members. It's supported by a foundation called the Financial Accounting Foundation. And in 1984, to, fa to react quickly to changes in the industry, it created this EITF, Emerging Issues Task Force, it identify financial reporting issues and attempt to resolve them without involving the FASB. So quick, a quick way to resolve to answer the industry. It primarily addresses implementation issue or a FASB have, ha, has a rule and they need more clarification about how to implement the rules. This organization, the EITF, will respond to that. It speeded up the process of standard setting. Now you, you can have standard setting earlier. And rulings eventually, once they once the rulings are ratified by FASB, they become they are considered gap. They are considered gap. Basically, FASB have the last saying. 
And also fancy what they did, they develop what's called the conceptual framework, which is something that we learn about this conceptual framework. The conceptual framework is not gap. So rather than following a piecemeal, they wanted to create a general rules that you would follow in all situation. And this is what the conceptual framework will, which we'll talk about in a separate recording. FASB issues what we call accounting standards update, not research bulletin, not opinions, ASUs. Accounting standards update. And in 2009, they, they created the accounting standard codification. What they did, they integrated all the topics from the research bulletin, from the opinions, from the ASUs, and a searchable online database called the codification. It included also a portion of the SEC accounting guidance, any accounting guidance that the SEC has. This codification is organized into nine main topics. I'm going to show you the topics and approximately 90 subtopics and many subtopics under those 90 subtopics. But these are the nine topics, which are the first one is the general principle, presentation, assets, liabilities, equity, revenues, expenses, broad transaction and industry information. For example, if you want to learn about receivable, you'll go under assets, you'll go under receivable, under receivable, you want to learn about bad debt, you'd click under bad debt, so on and so forth. This is how you would look up information under the codification. It's something that you need to be familiar with when it comes to the CPA exam and as well as an accounting student or a professional. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional MCQs, true false questions that's going to help you understand these topics better. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.